Well, as we bring you back to uh, Calgary, don't forget the alumni showdown at Comerica Park on New Year's Eve day. And uh, Sergey Fedorov just announced he'll be playing in that one. My broadcast partner, Chris Osgood, will be along. Mr. Redmond, of course, and Nick Litstrom. We're all excited about that. And remember, tickets go on sale Monday, November 4th at 10 o'clock in the morning. The uh, alumni showdown, two games on that day. And uh, should be an exciting day as before we get set for the big house on January 1st. Our goaltenders brought to you by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers and for the Red Wings, Jimmy Howard with a great save on Daniel Sedin in Vancouver to preserve the lead and a 2-1 Red Wings victory. And for the first time in 18 games and for the first time since December of 2008, a Calgary goalie not named Mika Kiprasov is facing Detroit. But this guy is all too familiar. He's Joey McDonald, whom the Wings signed as a free agent back in December of 01, made his pro debut in Cincinnati of the American Hockey League and his head coach way back then was Mike Babcock before he made it to the NHL too. Our referees, Mike Lego number three, Islan Haber is number 22, and the Flames in their newest third jersey, 12th in team history, not with the familiar Flaming Sea, but representative of the city and community, they say. The Red Wings, well, they're just sticking with tradition and hard to better the original. As Danny DeKaiser cuts right in front of Jimmy Howard, DeKaiser throws one ahead, Bertuzzi starts with Zetterberg and Datsuk, and they could see a lot of Matt Stage in tonight along with David Jones and Curtis Glenn cross the forward line for Calgary. Good outlet there by Zetterberg to Pavel Datsuk through the middle. Datsuk into the flame zone and former flame Todd Bertuzzi jumped in ahead of the play on the left wing and offside 33 seconds into this game from the Scotiabank Saddle Dome in Calgary. Ken Daniels, Chris Osgood, Trevor Thompson and our Fox Sports Detroit Plus with you. And Mike Babcock in his ninth season with the Red Wings saw his team get off to what he felt would happen in Vancouver. He said, why don't we allow just 20 shots and win 2-1? That's exactly what they did. And played their best game of the year, Ken, to this point, all around the ice, a full 60 minutes and were full marks for the victory. And Johan Franzen is back in the lineup. He'll be back at center with uh, Daniel Alfredson and Daniel Cleary on his wings. Quincy on defense along with Brendan Smith. Mike Camilleri in his second tour of duty with the Flames didn't get it out. Franz into the goal and tipped by Alfredson and just wide. Played ahead there by Dennis Weidman, number six on the Flames blue line. Turned back and here come the Red Wings. Franzen with a long shot in that's deflected wide. TJ Galliardi got a bit of a high stick from Franzen who's going to go to his, the uh, penalty box in his return to the lineup after missing the game in Vancouver with that undisclosed injury. It looked like an accidental high stick by Franz and just going into the corner trying to retrieve the puck. Lift the stick and he missed the stick hitting him in the face. Joy McDonald's gone to the Calgary bench and the Flames just give it up. They'll have the face off in Detroit zone anyway as the rules apply when you head to a power play and Johan Franzen back in the lineup will head to the penalty box. And he has been hot in Calgary. He's going to get a chance to cool off here for two minutes. Just trying to get body position, bumped a bit, careless, carelessly holding a stick into the face of the Flames player. Putting the Calgary Flames on the power play here early in the game. Flames power play 20th in the league, 0 for 13, the last four overall. They beat Detroit in all three meetings last season and went three for eight against the Red Wings with the man advantage. There was a high stick on Cronwall, and so this will be four aside. So much for that power play. Just 11 seconds in, now it's the uh, Calgary Flames high sticking penalty as Cronwall took one across the head. Almost the same instance as the Franzen penalty here. Crawl going into the corner, tries to jump around, getting body position, loses control of the stick. Anytime there's any carelessness with the stick carried high, the referees have been told to make sure they make those calls. Almost identical penalties called here, and we'll see some four and four action early in the game. Bob Hartley, the uh, head coach of the Calgary Flames, who uh, had a very tough training camp for this team. In the exit interviews last year, he said, you guys want to play for this team, you better come in the best shape of your life into a man. Most players did, including Yuri Hoodler, and this Calgary team, as you mentioned, Chris, very tough to play against. They come with a lot of speed, and they are energetic. 
And the number one thing I've heard just being at the rink this morning, being here for two days, is they're a lot quicker team. They're a lot faster. They play, they play hard. They've always played hard, but they weren't exactly the quickest team in the National Hockey League. With that combination, it's going to make them for a tough out. A few nights back, they lost to Toronto here 4-2, but outshot the Leafs 43-22. Leafs continue to win. They're outshot a lot of games, but uh, Calgary uh, did their best to try to win that night. And they had a tough West Coast trip Calgary did to start this season. Didn't go well, but of late have been doing pretty well. 5-5-2 and two record. And only one regulation loss in their past five, in their five here at home at 3-1-1. One, one. Kindle moved into the corner, hit there by Stajan. Zetterberg a lift of the stick and Datsuk's got the puck. For Brendan Smith, down low it goes. Zetterberg with a spin back away from TJ Brody. Now to Pavel Datsuk as Kindle moves in deep. Datsuk, Butler watching him, good little feedback. Kindle now to Smith. And then Smith has it poked off his stick by Glenn Cross. Well, they had Stajan out there against Datsuk and Zetterberg, but during the course of the game tonight, that's going to be the biggest problem for the Flames is containing those two players. they got a young team that rely on a stage and to keep them in check. It's going to be a tough, tough, tough task for him. And now Stephen Weiss, who's centering the third line tonight, comes out four on four here with Alfredson. Skate to stick, and that goes off a stick. Getting in front of that was Chris Russell, the defenseman, and up and out of play. Daniel Alfredson scored that big goal, as we showed you off the top, in Vancouver two nights ago. Well, Weiss coming off probably his best game of the season at Vancouver, although held up the score sheet, was using his body, protecting the puck, did a lot of good things that impressed coach Mike Babcock. And Alperson was good again. He's been playing great all season, a veteran presence, but already Weiss skating better tonight again. Maybe he's gaining that confidence, Ken. I would think so. It's a matter of time just to start to feel comfortable. Camilleri couldn't bust past Cronwall as DeKaiser leaves it for him. Cronwall for Weiss off his stick and regathers control. Cronwall takes it to center. Alfredson getting one into Weiss. Weiss back for Alfredson. Stick was lifted but carried on. Now a break for Camilleri on the left wing. Backlund catching up. Camilleri gives him the puck. Back to Camilleri and it hopped over his stick. Nicely set up on a two on one. Camilleri and Backlund but no go for Calgary. Alfredson drops back. Here's Brendan Smith in. His shot. That'll be stopped by Joey McDonald. Boy, four on four opens up some ice here. Well, two on one, the, both ends. a two on one, the one direction, and young Danny DeKaiser is on defense. We've talked a lot about him in the pregame show. Nice nifty pass back and forth. Jimmy Howard desperately trying to get back to the post. Bounces over the stick, Calamari, but can't be giving up two ones like that this early in the game, giving the Flames some energy if they possibly scored there. We understand we're having some technical issues, working to rectify those as quickly as possible. But we do have audio, we understand. So with that, Brendan Smith in back of his own goal of Jimmy Howard. And Brendan Smith will skate at the center ice with a right wing feed and a big collision oh. at the Calgary line just as Jones was coming out of the box. Collided there with Franzen. Yuri Hudler gets bumped. Hudler wearing number 24 for Calgary. Cleary turning one back here to Quincy. That puck goes off Hoodler, who's knocked down inside the Detroit blue line. Sven Berchi played it to the corner for Sean Monahan in front of the goal to Berchi, and a save by Howard. Calgary with a close opportunity there. Uh, Jimmy Howard sealing the bottom of the net, not allowing any pucks to slide underneath. Calgary working hard to get the puck down low, slipped it up front of the net, creating an opportunity, but Jimmy Howard, this is what he's so good at, sealing the low part of the net. Here you can see there's absolutely no way this puck is going to get underneath him and find its way into the net. Good save. Backlund won that draw cleanly from Anderson. The point shot went wide. Backlund's got it again. Backlund was a healthy scratch against Toronto in the 4-2 Flames loss. Back in the lineup tonight. So much is expected from number 11 in red. A former first round pick. 24th overall in 2007. And yet really hasn't developed like they thought. Good defensively. They're waiting him to be consistent offensively. Yeah, sometimes it takes a little longer. The Red Wings have one of those guys, Jakob Kindle, who's developed a little slower than he would have liked than other people, but he's become a good defenseman for the Red Wings here in the last two seasons. Lance Boma was right in on top of Jimmy Howard, who held on to the puck. Number 17 for the Flames. Early going here, the first thing I have noticed about Calgary is not only their speed, but... They're playing together as a five-man unit and really getting in the Red Wings' face, making it tough on them to get out of their zone and get pucks into the Calgary zone, doing a good job. 
I'm impressed so far with Calgary. It's going to take the Red Wings A game tonight to win this one. And again, it's the stage in Glenn Cross and Jones line against Datsuk, Zetterberg, and Bertuzzi. This will be called icing. The faceoff will come back into the Red Wing end. And if a Detroit player gets a hat trick in this game, bring a copy of the scoring summary to a participating Arby's location tomorrow. Get a free small order of curly fries. You can find a copy of that summary in your newspaper or on the Red Wings page at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Datsuk won that draw cleanly. Good face-off win there by Datsuk against Stajan. And another stop in play. A nice win, a nice little quick pass by DeKaiser to get the puck out of the zone. He sure is a cool customer, that young DeKaiser. Nice pass to get out, get out of the zone. He continues to impress night after night and game after game. Brendan Smith. He'll fire it in. Played ahead there by Shane O'Brien. A bouncing puck and slapped by Camilleri just out to center ice over Joe Colburn's stick. The big centerman number eight for Calgary, the one-time Toronto Maple Leaf. Fired from a fourth round pick in late September. As Joey McDonald will leave it there for O'Brien. O'Brien forming a nice defense duo back there with Derek Smith. Intercepted by the Red Wings. Here's Brendan Smith with a shot that goes wide. Abdelkader in to get it. This is what the Red Wings have to do again, just like Vancouver to be successful. Wear down a Flames team and wear them down their own zone minute after minute, and they will pay dividends in the end. Knock back at center for Smith, skate the stick. Red Wings and Flames will both get changes going here. Franzen with a lift to the stick, and Calgary's Colburn brings it ahead to center. Colburn brings it through. Galliardi in back of the goal. Alfredson pushing on T.J. Galliardi, number 39. He played his minor hockey here in the Calgary area and junior with the Hitmen. As Joey McDonald will hold that for a faceoff and will step out in a 0-0 first period on Fox Sports Detroit Plus. Our Toyota scouting report on Sean Monahan, who spent the summer looking at video of guys who are the top face-off men in the National Hockey League. I'm sure Pavel Datsuk was a part of that, but Monahan's a guy who loves to go to the front of the net. The sixth overall pick of Calgary, so he just turned 19. Sixth overall pick this past summer. Do you know the Calgary Flames are the only team in the National Hockey League to not have a top five draft pick ever in their history? Four times they've drafted sixth overall, but never a top five pick, and they think Monahan, though, could be the best of the lot that they've taken. Here's Zetterberg, and the puck went just behind him. The Flames with only five draft picks their own on their roster. 14 Flames by trade on this team. Comparing the Red Wings, but upwards of 13 on their roster. So. Well, I think if you were to ask anybody in a Flames organization something they'd like to become better at moving forward, is probably their drafting. Here's Datsuk. I remember Jerome McGinley was here for the longest time. was a Dallas Stars draft pick and traded for Joe Neuendijk. It was not their own pick. Intercepted at the line and went off that six six stage and threw it over. Jones and a big save by Howard on David Jones. Threw it to the front of the goal. Glenn Cross. Stage in and a stick lifted. Bertuzzi kept control of the puck. And a Kaiser just chipped it off the glass and safely down into Flames territory. A nice breed by Jimmy Howard. Noticing the, the break in on his left side coming out to challenge and making a nice save. Brendan Smith has to hurry back, forced there by Sven Berchi. Berchi, a 13th overall pick of Calgary in 2011. Smith just escaped the hit. Cleary to Alfredson. In back of the goal on the far side. It's Dennis Weidman. Puck taken away, Quincy shot. Berchi's got it. It was behind Weidman. And Monaghan couldn't do anything with it, so now Berchi will try. Berchi able to keep that puck in, threw it into the corner for Yuri Hudler. Point in all but two games this season for Hudler, who leads their team. Franzen took it away from his former teammate. Cleary safely down ice, relieving the pressure so the Red Wings can get a change. 
O'Brien. Kendall stepped up at center. This should be icing as Boma threw it from his own side of center ice. So the faceoff will come back into the Calgary zone. Well, here's a save by Jimmy Howard. A nice read, good shot, slides across. Unorthodox save, kicking the left pad halfway up the net, but another nice save by Jimmy Howard to keep this score deadlocked at zeros here in the first period. Kendall at his own line. For Tatar. Handle Cater. Tried to go back into Tatar. There was Backlund. Ahead for Boma. Boma's pass went off a skate of McGratton. Derek Smith moves in deep. Smith, who took a hard hit in that game against the Leafs the other night, but did return to action. That shot went wide of the goal. And the man who hit him, Carter Ashton, got a two-game suspension from the National Hockey League today for that hit on Smith. Boma gets taken to the boards, neatly there by Kendall. Back to the point for Russell, the shot. Knocked down in front. Stephen Weiss will circle the net. Creates some space for himself. Applicator at center, pushed by Russell. Cross-side speed taken away. Played back by Weiss, worried that the Red Wings may have too many men on the ice. Too too many turnovers here in the first period. But the better job the Red Wings are doing is when they do turn it over, they're protecting the house, protecting the net in front of Jimmy Howard. They did have a bad turnover, but blocked the shot and got it out of the zone. Approaching the halfway point of this first period here at the Calgary Saddle Dome. Well, the players saying this morning at the skate, the ice has been so much better. This won't have enough to get over for icing. Remember the awful flood they had here in Calgary. It was 10 rows deep here at the Saddle Dome. What a job they did just to be able to play here to start this season. As the community rallied together, and just marvelous. They got this rink back to where it was. The photos on the wall were incredible. It gave you the, a feeling of the devastation and what, what really happened here and how much work they put in to get this rink back up and going for the regular season here is amazing. It looks like it did, but everything had to be replaced, including the ice plant. There's a shot in on Howard that was stopped by Chris Butler. So we'll step out four seconds past the halfway point in the first in a 0-0 game. The month of June and this summer and the month of June in Calgary, 100,000 people had to be evacuated from homes and businesses. Just the devastation that took place around this city and how they rallied together and everybody pinched it, pitched in. Can you imagine that in this building here, as you look inside the Saddle Dome, where the water had been up to the top of the lower bowl, the, the first 10 rows, everything just underwater. And now they had to rebuild everything that was in here from every last piece of cutlery. And everything had to be done. Everything was tossed and replaced and amazing what they were able to do. It's incredible walking in here and seeing the job that the volunteers and the workers have done here to get this arena ready up and going for the season. Datsuk will push one back forward to Kaiser Bertuzzi and quickly over to Zetterberg. Just too far. Brody. Butler ahead to Glen Cross. Datsuk took it away, the league leader in takeaways. If they give him one there, it would be his 24th to lead the National Hockey League. Jonathan Taves right behind and Marion Hosa. Bertuzzi kicking at it, back of the goal. In goes Zetterberg to punch one past Brody. Following up was Datsuk, and sure enough, the Red Wings have the puck. Kindle shot! Lose it back, Datsuk! Scores! Datsuk and Zetterberg made that all happen in the corner. Created a turnover, and the Red Wings lead it one to nothing. More magic here by number 13. And Henrik Zetterberg creating that turnover. Another steal by Datsu, getting it back to Kindle with the blast from the point through crowd. Nice save by McDonald, but not a chance on the second opportunity by Datsu. When he gets the puck here, that's when the magic starts. A quick snapper. Puts the Red Wings up. Well, nothing. Datsu, though, when he gets those opportunities, he buries them with authority to put the Red Wings up. One nothing. The league leader in takeaways started things. Zetterberg helped him out. He's got his sixth goal now to tie Hendrik Zetterberg for the team lead and some good work by Todd Bertuzzi and the net front presence. And the Red Wings lead in one to nothing. Yeah, the Kindle with the good point shot. Got the primary assist, secondary assist to Zetterberg. And a good back check there by Daniel Cleary. 
Lashoff trying to take it away from Yuri Hudler. Hudler holds on to the puck all alone, Monahan. He couldn't have been more open. And good for the Red Wings that the puck bobbled off his stick. Was, Back to the line held in. I was odd at how wide open he was and how much time he would have had if he would have crowded that puck. Hudler with it in the corner. To Berchi over his stick to the line to Russell. Saved by Howard. And Franzen just taps it away. 10.57, the time of Datsuk sixth from Kindle and Zetterberg. And a 1-0 Red Wing lead. Oh, a big collision as Abdelkader stood up and Backlund ran right into it. Weidman with a pass that went astray down ice. And the faceoff will come back into the Calgary zone. Well, just a fabulous play by Cleary to break this great opportunity by Calgary up. A bad bounce off the backboards. The puck coming to the left. Now, for some reason, Monaghan, a miscommunication down low right after the great play by Cleary. And a big collision with Big Backlund and another big guy, number eight, Ablocator, who's no stranger to collisions like that. Red Wings, who were outscored 12-5 by the Flames last season, losing all three games. So a good start for them tonight. They have a 1-0 lead in the first period. They turn it over there, and it's tipped wide of the goal by Boma. As the fourth lines are out there now, and a penalty upcoming. Holding is the call. I think to Anderson. Yeah, Yoakam Anderson is going to the box. So the Red Wings will be shorthanded. Yeah, Anderson, just a puck battle in the corner. There it comes into the corner, battling for position. That's a that's a tough call. Just fighting for possession of that puck in the corner, leaning on each other. Not a very tough call, but nonetheless, putting the Flames in the power play. Or 7:33 left in the first period. So this face-off will be between Pavel Datsuk and Joel Colburn. Colburn had a slow start here with the Flames after his trade from Toronto the end of September. Another one who played his minor hockey here in Calgary and now joining the Flames. Colburn with a tip and knocked away off to the corner. Colburn went down, picked up here by Curtis Glencross. The pass intended for Colburn was knocked away by Cronwall. Mike Camilleri. Back for Chris Russell. Camilleri in front. Weidman's got it at the point. Camilleri for Russell. Weidman with a shot tipped in front by Glenn Cross. And Jimmy Howard will hold that. A nice puck movement, movement by the Calgary Flames, which would creates this opportunity. A one-timer comes across. Now, why Jimmy Howard makes this save? And I said it a few times in Vancouver. He does not sit back in the blue plane and allow this tip to find a hole or get by him. He gets out on top of things. Creates a smaller gap and smothers that puck in his chest. Weiss stayed with that faceoff, then got help from Lashoff. Flames wide, been able to keep into Russell, nearly gave it away to Eves. Yuri Hudler with it. Tried to go through a seam that was knocked away, though. Too many white sweaters in the way. Eves gets to the puck and sweeps one into the Flames end, and Patrick Eves and Stephen Weiss will go off in a change. As Alfredson comes over with Zetterberg, with less than a minute to go in the penalty to Anderson. Butler finds Weidman. Minute muncher on that Calgary blue line. 28 minutes a night for Weidman. Here's to Jones. The shot just wide. Hudler couldn't get it cleanly. Alfredson feeds one to head to Zetterberg. Alfredson going with him. Zetterberg cuts back to the middle, and a shot went high over McDonald's left hand. Mike Camilleri. Whoa, that could have been too many. Too many in the ice penalty for Calgary. I think they got away with one there. Kick back into the corner over Cronwall stick. And he managed to keep two flames along the wall. Glenn Cross played it back to the line to Butler, faked the shot. Back for Curtis Glenn Cross again. Saw some time with Anaheim, Columbus, and Edmonton. That shot deflected. Camilleri gets one back. Here's Joe Colburn with it for Mike Camilleri. Inadvertently played it right back to center as the penalty to Anderson is now over. Calgary 0 for 2 on the power play, although the first one was pretty short. Here come the Red Wings. Tatar had to go off his stick. Just onside, they say, it was Weiss. 
as the Flames TJ Brody for Butler. Chris Butler fires it in. Lance Beaumont lost it there to Advocate. Shane O'Brien kept it in the zone. O'Brien came with Jones from Colorado in the deal for Alex Tangay and Corey Sarich. Matt Stajan, one time Maple Leaf, came in the Dion Fanuk trade. A wide open Derek Smith had it blocked. Thomas Tatar got in the way. Advocator gave it back to Tatar. On now to Weiss, and the Red Wings will get a change. Derek Smith will skate at the center. Smith backhands one into Howard, and he'll just want to hold it, settle it down, and get himself a commercial timeout here because there's under six to go in period number one. You're watching Red Wings Hockey on Fox Sports Detroit Plus, presented by Bell Tire. Welcome to the new NHL in the Atlantic and the Metropolitan Division standings in the East. The top three teams in each division make it. Right now, the Toronto Maple Leafs have the best record in the uh, Eastern Conference. What would happen is, for the playoffs to start, Montreal would go over and join the other sides. You have four teams, and Detroit would stay where they are, and they'd play Toronto because Toronto's got the best record. They would play the Red Wings, and Montreal would go over to the other side. It's a, a complicated system, and I don't know if that's going to be changed at some point. But right now, even though Detroit is fifth in their division, they would stay where they are. Montreal would go over to the uh, Metropolitan Division and be in four spots. So the top three in each make it. It'll be confusing. We'll try to straighten out as we go along as they go offside. Which would actually not slating any teams. It would be a benefit for Montreal to move over to the division. It would be. And that's just it. And wait till we haven't factored in regulation or overtime wins yet, non-shootout victories. Wait till that comes down to the end. It would be because Montreal would go over and play Pittsburgh in the first round. If they were to win, they take on the winner of Islanders or Carolina in the second round. It's very strange. There's going to be some confusing scenarios the last 10 games there of the will season be, for sure. We're for going sure. going over a lot of different yeah. ways the, it could happen. The top three teams in each division make the playoffs and the next two wild card, but... And once you go over, if you switch over to another division, you stay there for the remainder of the playoffs. You don't switch back. So Montreal wouldn't come back. They Montreal would, would not that come division. back. That's right. And even though they're fourth and Detroit's fifth, which they could they possibly move over. draw an easier opponent, possibly. so to speak. That's right. A lot of uh, fodder over the next uh, five months or so. Went off a skate, and Zetterberg's got it for the Red Wings. Smith back for Datsu to Bertuzzi. And they may switch that Zetterberg assist to Bertuzzi yet. Bertuzzi's got it. Back for Datsu. To the line to the Kaiser. And a quick shot. Screening in front again was Bertuzzi. Stage and looks to clear it off the glass and out of play. Well, see living legends back on the ice in the 2013 Leafs Red Wings Alumni Showdown on December 31st at Comerica Park. Two games, one incredible memory. Tickets go on sale Monday, November 4th, 10 in the morning. For more information, go to DetroitRedWings.com. Advocator helped that puck back for Cronwall. Advocator turning, got checked. The Kaiser back gives it back to Cronwall. For Steven Weiss. Advocator on the left wing. That shot's tipped up and out of play. Well, the Red Wings who had Johan Franzen back in the uh, lineup. Luke Glendening's gone to Grand Rapids. And the other way came Peter Morazic. Uh, Jonas gustafson has been put on injured reserve. So Morazic will play tomorrow night in Edmonton. And he had an interesting little adventure getting here. Got here at around 10.30 this morning. And he's got uh, perhaps the best girlfriend ever because he was in Cleveland when he found out he had to come here to Calgary. He was with the Griffins and couldn't get here because he didn't have a passport. No, he forgot his passport. And his girlfriend, and what a fine she must be, drove his passport to Cleveland for him, which enabled him to get here. He got here about five minutes before Pax morning threw his equipment on. Centerberg scores! On a great feed from Bertuzzi. And it's 2 nothing. 
Well, like we said earlier, Zetterberg and Datsuk have been a handful for the Flames early, and they could be the difference makers. A young Flames team having troubles containing these two guys, and Bertuzzi using that big body to shield the puck, enabling Pavel to get it, and a nifty backhand between the legs pass, between the legs of the Flames player pass, and Zetterberg's not going to miss that, and he buries it high in the net. No chance for McDonald, 2-0 Red Wings here in the first period. So if Zetterberg doesn't get an assist in the first one, he's got himself a goal. And it is 2-0 for Detroit, despite being outshot 10-5. So Joey McDonald, who got his first career shutout against the Red Wings, is a member of the New York Islanders in a 42-save performance and four goal posts helping him out. At Joe Louis Arena, has beaten twice here in the first as Henrik Zetterberg gets the second Red Wing goal. And really having no chance on either of the goals. And Pavel Datsuk and Henrik Zetterberg are up for their old tricks here in the first period in Calgary. And providing a lot of frustration for a young Flames team that has looked good this period, but is down 2 nothing. Cleared into the corner for Camilleri. TJ Galliardi. Anderson with a slap of the stick and away from Camilleri. Anderson in perfect position. Galliardi to Colburn behind the goal to Kaiser tying him up. But here's Camilleri able to walk out in front. That was blocked as Anderson got in front of it. And there's going to be another penalty here to Detroit. Interference will be the call. And as Cronwall's a, going to the box. That's a tough call. Gallerati, Gallerati was going to the net himself, really. Cronwall, not much of a push. Flames player going in there himself, causing... I actually was thinking that penalty was going to be against the Flames, but... The tables were turning. Cromwell is going to sit for two minutes on a, a call that looked to me like it was going to be interference on Jimmy Howard. Russell on the far side. Flames power play. Yuri Hudler. Weidman feeds off to Russell. A one-time blue jacket. In for Monaghan. High slot. Waited too long. And Stephen Weiss was able to check him, and Russell goes back to get it. Nice play by Weiss and young Monaghan. In the NHL now, lesson learned there. Things happen a lot, lot faster here. Here's Jones on the right wing. Back here to Russell. Five points the past six games for him. Russell with it again. Quickly moved here to David Jones. Weidman backs up to the corner over Hoodler's blade. Monahan to White to Russell, to Weidman. Fans want him to shoot. They do, but it went wide. Hudler's got it. Chris Russell. There's one minute back minute for Hudler. To Monaghan. The shot. Missed the target. David Jones. Good puck control, but the Red Wings keeping the flames to the outside. Here's Monaghan. Again, hopped on. Weidman couldn't one time. Russell Will got blocked by Drew Miller. Well, Monaghan may be changing his stick after this period. Plenty of pucks are bouncing right over that stick of his right now. Here's Brendan Smith. Jump past Weidman to get there. And Eves down the ice it goes. Nice simple play by Smith. Put it to Eves who throws the puck all the way down the ice enabling Red Wings to kill more time off this penalty. Here comes Camilleri. Camilleri drops one back here to Brody. Into the middle of the shot. He blocked in front by DeKaiser. On a one-timer from Glenn Cross. A lot of great puck moving by the Flames, but they can't penetrate. The tight box by the Red Wings are doing a great job in front of their own goal right now. Well, the Red Wings only allowed 20 shots, as this will be icing to the Vancouver Canucks. They've allowed 12 already this period. However, Jimmy Howard's been strong. A great block here by DeKaiser, who realizes and reads the play. Drops down to one knee, taking off his right thigh. But really impressed with the way the Red Wings have held that tight box and been, although the shots are 12-5, they've been, they've been great in front of their own net tonight, Ken, so far. So Jimmy Howard remains in the goal for this last faceoff, and just a little too far for Jakob Kindle to get to. So the first period, a good one for Detroit, despite being outshot 12 to 5. 
Our Ram first intermission is Henrik Zetterberg guesting with Trevor Thompson and Jay Onright and Dan, or Dan O'Toole, our buddies at Fox Sports 1, who do such a, a great job, will be with us during our first intermission. All that coming up, so we'll have that for you when we come back to Calgary as the uh, Red Wings lead it by a score of 2 to nothing. And the big gunners for the Red Wings get the goals. Datsuk and Zetterberg, 6th and 7th, respectively. If a Detroit player gets a hat trick in this game, bring a copy of the scoring summary to a participating Arby's location tomorrow, and you'll get a free small order of curly fries. You can find a copy of the scoring summary in your newspaper or on the Red Wings page at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Detroit got goals on consecutive shots, 6-18 apart, the fourth and fifth shots of the first period. They only had five when it ended, and Pavel Datsuk got one of those two goals. He got the first one to open the scoring, and then Henrik Zetterberg got the other. They're sixth and seventh, respectively. And period number two is underway as Datsuk brings it in. Goes off a skate as Bertuzzi and Zetterberg were in deep, and back comes Jones. Datsuk got back to knock the puck away before Glenn Cross could get a chance, and then Datsuk took it away and made a great play there. All that before staging could get it, and Pavel Datsuk sends the Red Wings on their way. Now goes to catch up to that feed from Bertuzzi that didn't work. Went off Stajan at center. De Kaiser played one that hit Stajan. And Zetterberg will move it back to Cronwall as the Red Wings in the midst of a change. And they'll get that going as it's brought to center here by Cronwall. Brendan Smith, Cronwall off his skate, turned over. And a result of that, Camilleri's in the clear. Off a Red Wing neutralized turnover, and Jimmy Howard stops Mike Camilleri cold. And just a fabulous stop by Jimmy Howard off a, off a bad turnover by the Red Wings, again in the second period, but Jimmy Howard standing his ground, staying with Camilleri, making a, just a great, calm save. That's our big boys, big play of the game. This great stop here by Jimmy Howard on Mike Camilleri. Flames win that draw. Goes off a stick. Oh, and just wide by T.J. Galliardi. A broken stick. Franzen's without one, so he takes Daniel Cleary's. And then the stick got in the way. Boy, Calgary back right into that broken stick. And Weidman, that disrupted his flow. And the Red Wings will get an icing here. They'll gladly take it. And now they'll be able to go get a, a stick. Will Franzen, who gives Cleary back his twig. Well, turnovers again. Especially in the second period, you have the long line change. Turnovers become critical in a period like this. And they've been hurting the Red Wings all season long. It's something they need to get better at. And there, Jimmy Howard bailing out the Red Wings with a huge save on the breakaway. Franzen, who's back at center after missing one game. Flew in here to Calgary yesterday to rejoin the team. With Luke Glendening going back to Grand Rapids. And a former Griffin, Chad Billens, who's now with Calgary, has just been called up by the Flames. As a little insurance, he's now playing in the American Hockey League in Abbotsford after being a big part of the Griffins' Calder Cup championship last season. Chad Billens may get an NHL turn before long with the Flames. Weidman. Into the left wing offensive corner. Quincy has Berchie coming at him. Then Monaghan tried to relieve Smith of the puck. Tatar to center. Up with Alfredson. Tatar delays and shoots. Goes high over Joey McDonald. Here's Tatar to the faceoff dot. Drops it back to last shot. Cross now to Kendall. Bronson threw it to the goal. Alfredson trying to find it. O'Brien was there. Tatar trying to intercept. Hudler went the other way for Berchi and he missed it. And this will be icing and the faceoff will come back into the Calgary zone. Well, Ice Time is brought to you by Motor City Casino Hotel. And speaking of Ice Time, only Ryan Suter plays more per night than the 28 minutes or so logged by this man, Dennis Weidman. An eighth-round pick of Buffalo back in 02, who came over from Washington in a deal. A 30-year-old defenseman. And the Flames have had Fanouf and Bo Meester on the back end. And remember, they're missing a key guy back there now, and Mark Giordano, their captain, who's out with a broken right ankle for eight weeks. 
Lost Lee Stepniak the game after that. A valuable forward with a broken ankle, all because of blocked shots. Fired in here by the Flames. Last shot ties up his man. Kendall grabs the puck for Advocator. For Weiss to Tatar. Sends it in, a sign for the Red Wings to change as their fourth line will come over the board. Drew Miller, Yoakam Anderson, and Eves. Icing charge here against Calgary. Face off back in the flame zone. Speaking of those injuries to Mark Giordano and Lee Stepniak, let's show them to you and why the Flames have now instituted a mandatory skate guard protection. That one, Giordano, gone eight weeks, their captain. He'd been so good. And Lee Stepniak blocks a shot in front, and he is also gone. Well, they say two to three weeks or so. Here's Smith with a shot. That was blocked. Just like that. And it seemed to... Boma got that off his foot and he'll immediately go off. Although, again, the Flames have been told by Bob Hartley and Jay Feaster, the general manager, everybody will wear skate protection now and that's what they are all doing. As McDonald shoots it around, Toronto has instituted a similar policy under Randy Carlisle. Even though some players may not like it. Into the corner for Glenn Cross. Taken to the boards. Eves trying to dig the puck free. Brian McGratton, their tough guy, had it. Smith lost it in his skates. Able to clear it away. McGratton, another shot. Howard held the short side. Back to the line. That went off Russell's stick. Russell's has been so good. Only 5'10". There's a giveaway. Save made by Howard. Staging with a shot off the side of the net. Zetterberg moving it for Smith. Oops, one out to center off Weidman's glove back into his own zone for Russell. Stajan quickly through. And they're not sure what's called here, but he had a feeling the whistle was going somewhere. Who's it going to be on? There's going to be a penalty here. High sticking will be the call. Let's see. Too many men on the ice. Too many men on the ice will be the call then. All right, had his hand up like it was going to be a high sticking penalty, but too many men on the ice to Detroit. So uh, let's uh, count six here, Chris. Well, line change is important in the second period. You talked about it. They have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Obviously, one too many. Brendan Smith. After the turnover where Jimmy Howard bails him out, a slow line change. Flames turn the puck up very quick, and it cost the Red Wings two minutes. We'll go on the power play. This is a big penalty kill here for the Red Wings, being up 2-0 here with 15 minutes just over left in the second period. Anderson and Colburn on this faceoff. Russell with it, and then gave it away. I mentioned Russell only at 5'10". Calgary folks here are saying, boy, if he were three or four inches taller, he, the way he's playing this year, he'd be one of the top defensemen in the league if he had that size factor to him. He moved the puck so well. Camilleri's done okay for his size through the years. Things began for him in his collegiate career at Michigan. Played back here to Russell. Delays, then shoots. Knocked down in front. Anderson. Moving it along. And down the ice it goes. With the absence of Jonathan Erickson, Cromwell sure has been very, very good defensively since his absence and played great along with the Kaiser. That Russell's a nice, nice pickup and he's been playing well here for Calgary. Last off, trying to tie it up along the boards. Russell taken down by Eves. Then Weiss kicking at it. Good second, third effort. And he got some help there from Kyle Quincy to get relieve the pressure. Dennis Weidman skates it through center. Goes in after it into the corner. And we'll get a stop in play. I mentioned those skate fenders or shot blockers, whatever you want to call them. There are some that are Velcro. It's almost like the fake tuxedo there. 
on top, the laces that are fake, the plastic ones, some of the players say the puck bounces off too much, but the Flames have told every player to wear them. I asked Patrick Eves, do you wear them? He said, no. I said, why not? He said, because the only time I wore one, I blocked Shea Weber's shot, and they still have to drain my ankle every few months, and it is one weird-looking thing. So he said, the only time I had it on, the shot missed it, and that's why I don't wear one. Six Red Wings do wear shot blockers, including the two on the blue line right now for the Red Wings, and DeKaiser and Cronwall, and down the ice it goes. It's, it's almost like the visors, Kenneth. Do you think they'll ever become mandatory? Well, they are now. Now they grandfather for some teams, but league-wide, that's a stretch, but it may happen one day. Zetterberg will shoot it in. Picked up at center. Lash off back for Kendall. And that's into the penalty box area with 13-13 to go in the second period. 13 for the Red Wings been pretty good tonight with a goal. And now for Red Wings Hockey on Fox Sports Detroit Plus presented by Bell Tire. And welcome back with the Red Wings up 2-0 on the Flames with 13-13 left in the second period. Red Wings, although they're up 2-0, would probably like to generate a little bit more activity around ex-Red Wing Joey McDonald. They had five shots in the first and don't have one yet here in the second. The Flames with 15 for the game. One thing about Calgary, they're playing with a lot more structure now. This is a team that's no longer looking at one or two guys. There's no longer a Ginla. There's no longer Kiprasov. And, uh, you know, they got to Kerry Ramo, who's their backup netminder to Joey McDonald tonight, and they've basically been splitting the goaltending duties. And Rito Berra in Abbotsford, who came over from St. Louis in the Jay Bomeister deal, may be their best goaltender and goalie of the future. Yeah, he's a goalie they really like. He just needs some time to play some games and get some experience over here in North America, but a very good young prospect for the Flames. This will go right down to McDonald, who will leave it there for Butler. Stajan drops off to Glenn Cross. Stick in the way there by DeKaiser to help it wide as Datsuk very calmly played one back to Zetterberg. Three on three. Zetterberg, Butler stayed with him. Zetterberg still protected that puck. And then moved by Stajan for TJ Brody. Brody going wide on Brendan Smith. Brody went back to the point with it. Weidman, good job to keep it in. Galliardi in back of the goal for Matt Stajan. Stajan in front of the goal! And a good stick check there as Smith got over just as Galliardi was going to rifle it. And then the shot by Chris Russell went wide. Weidman at the right point. Galliardi gets poked to the ice by Quincy. And a takeaway there and held with Zetterberg. Able to get it along to Alfredson. Now to Datsuk. Went back for Alfredson. Weidman was there to knock it away, and Galliardi looks up ice and a good feed off the stick of Camilleri. Colburn, 6 4 forward, gets hit hard and taken down to the ice by Lashoff. Colburn gets back up and kicked it along. Not the best skater in the world, Joe Colburn, but really works at it and a determined checker. Played a lot of minutes against the Leafs. Loose in front of the goal. became elusive and couldn't jam it in. As Bronson will send one into the flame zone. So Calgary's had some opportunities here. The Red Wings are playing with fire right now. They got to pick it up. They've been turning pucks over. And no pun intended on your part, I'm sure. And no shots left yet. Here's Applicator. Right foot one wide and still not one. As we play just over nine minutes here in period two. Applicator to Tatar. Hit Camilleri skate to knock them down. Russell clears at the center. Tatar back in. Quincy at a shot block. Weiss able to find it. And goes and gets it. Stephen Weiss had it knocked away. Quincy shot sailed high off a of body of the Calgary player and into the protective netting. So the faceoff will stay in the Calgary zone. An applicator shooting that puck over the net, Ken. It's an underrated miss. Misses the net, comes around, and, and gives the Calgary Flames an opportunity. And here we see the Calgary Flames with a scoring chance. Holbert with a nice play, protecting the puck in the corner, throws it out. 
Jimmy Howard throwing his hand out. With help from Lashoff, they keep that out of goal. Red Wings have gone 12 minutes and 30 seconds now without a shot on goal. Their last shot was Zetterberg's goal at 17-15 of the first period. And yet, the good news is, at the halfway point in this game, they lead by a couple. Here's Eves, saved by McDonald. Big rebound grab by Sean Monaghan. Perfect pass for Hudler. As the Red Wings were in the midst of a change right there. Hudler's got it again. Kimball trying to stay with him. Finds Butler. Shot the... Change direction going on Jimmy Howard. Well, a nifty pass from the right corner by Yuri Hudler. Hudler with a great backhand sauce pass to Butler with the shot. Hit bounces stick. and bounces, hits Anderson's stick, then bounces off the ice and into the goal. A tough break for the Red Wings, but this happens when you've been in your end for this long, not creating much offense and defending the whole time. Bounces like that are eventually going to happen. So Butler gets the goal from Hoodler at 10-15. So Yuri Hoodler still with a point in every game, but two this season for Calgary. And this, their 13th game, he's at a point in 11 of them. Hoodler leads the Flames with nine assists now and 14 points. Boomer. Weiss. And the Red Wings get it to center. And you don't want to say we're predicting, but you could see that coming for a while. The Red Wings playing sloppily, not doing the things that did in Vancouver to be successful. And the Flames earning that goal to get them within one. Within one. Even though the Red Wings have been outshot in the first, it wasn't as though the play was being carried the way it is here. Here's Bertuzzi. Saved by McDonald. Zetterberg nearly stripped the puck away. This line's been the Red Wings' best. That went off Quincy, carrying on Glenn Cross on the backhander wide. And that's a great point. The chances by the Flames are much, much more and much, much better this period than they were in the first. And now you've got the Calgary crowd into things. They've been pretty quiet in the first 27 or 8 minutes of this game. Outlet feed by Quincy to Datsuk. Took a bump. Got it to where he wanted it to go. The Red Wings in the midst of a change here. And a long stretch pass for Camilleri. How big does that save Howard made on Camilleri look now? Probably made two or three this period that have been huge and able the Red Wings to be up two on off numerous turnovers. That is going to make Coach Mike Babcock very happy tonight. Butler, who's got the goal over to Colburn, on to Camilleri, moved through to TJ Galliardi. Flames force it deep again. They're going to tighten up the neutral zone, Ken, if they continue to be slow and sloppy in the neutral zone. That's just creating these odd man rushes and speed for the Flames coming through into the Red Wings zone. Good work there by Joe Colburn, first from front and then took the puck away. Now finally Cleary to center ice. Alfredson knocked down by Russell. Russell smoothly through the middle. Off the glass and in. Good move in by Camilleri, drop on back to Monet. The Red Wings earned their 2-0 lead in the first period. They've earned this 2-2 tie. A turnover in the neutral zone. Russell with the rim around. A nice spin move by Calamari to Monaghan with a quick snapper. Past Howard. With the Kaiser in front. Probably screen Howard a bit, but the turnovers in the neutral zone, the sloppy play in the neutral zone created this opportunity for the Flames. The two goals, two minutes and 32 seconds apart. And there's a reason why Mike Babcock has called this timeout. Unhappy with a lot of a lot of this, a lot of ways the Red Wings are playing this game right now. You need to be better in every zone. Coming off the game in Vancouver, probably their best of the season in all in every zone. Playing solid hockey. Tonight is the exact opposite. Like probably fortunate to be up two nothing, two, two, 
to be tied 2-2 right now. What do you think he's saying him right now? You guys get back to playing. Why are we playing? Well, he's probably telling him to skate. After He's probably surprised that for the way they played last game in Vancouver with such a solid effort, probably their best game of the year, a full 60 minutes. He's angry. He's going to tell him to skate, turn less pucks over, and let's get some shots on the net. We oh, we only have seven shots. They need to get some pucks on McDonald and crash the net and, and get going that in that direction right now. But, I mean, they've earned this 2-2 tie for sure. Well, just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game, brought to you by Miller Lite. Back-to-back -back shots for goals for Calgary. 17th and 18th shots in the game. And that's two, two shots this period. They're going that long time without one. Shots 18 to 7 in the game. Monaghan from Camilleri and Russell. Can that play that Patrick Eves just did dumping into the flames? That was probably what Coach Mike Babcock said on the bench. They've been turning a ton of pucks over in that position by the blue line. They've got to get pucks deep and force those demons to turn their backs. Red Wings will set up. Cronwall with a pass ahead for Miller. Red Wings with two goals in the first period tonight have outscored their opponents this season 14 to 8 in the first. Now being outscored 13 to 9 in second periods. Weiss had it. Go off his skate. Tatar finds it. Weiss goes back to get it. Oh, he got hit from behind. It's going to be a penalty here to Backlund for sure. Here's Quincy. Goes back to the line. Howard to the bench for an extra skater. Tatar's got it. Over the boards comes Zetterberg, but knocked down. And Calgary. When we come back, we'll be shorthanded, and the Red Wings are going to head to a bell tire power play with this game now all knotted up at two. Live through the draft in their first pick in the 2013 draft. We're talking about a few games ago. Anthony Mantha, the 20th overall selection, was named the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League's first star of the month in both September and October. And look at those numbers, 39 points in 15 games. We looked it up. We think he still has a long way to go, though, to catch Bossy's 140 goals in a season or Mario's 260 points or whatever he had, Mario Lemieux. My goodness, the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, they know how to score there, don't they? Well, they sure do. It's a wide-open league compared to the Western Hockey League and the Ontario Hockey League, which, with, which people in Michigan would be more familiar with, with the Plymouth Whalers there and the Windsor Spitfires right across the river. But Red Wings just keep coming with the prospects. Yeah, the and they moved down in the draft. They traded with San Jose, moved down in the draft and still got the man they wanted. Uh, Anthony Mantha, the grandson of Andre Pronable, who played a, a bit with the Red Wings back in the 50s. So the Red Wings on a bell tire power play here is Zetterberg. Shoots one, save made. Oh, and a wraparound try. Couldn't get it around McDonald for Tuesday. And a good opportunity there. A nice early opportunity with a shot from the point with Bertuzzi in front creating a screen. Joey McDonald with a great desperation save to kick out that right pad to foil Bertuzzi on that try. Bertuzzi with two assists tonight. Did get an assist on that first one. They took one away from Zetterberg. So that's his goal from Bertuzzi and Kindle. Zetterberg with a shot. That goes off a stick, out of play. So the faceoff will come up and stay inside the flame zone. A yeah, nice puck movement right away on the power player. This is what you want to do. Get pucks to the net. Make those Flames players turn their back. Bertuzzi with the opportunity. And a nice save by Joy McDonald, who fights through the screen at jumping Bertuzzi, grabbing the rebound, and a nice kick save with the right pad by Joy McDonald. Off the draw, Calgary will get it down the ice. This is the second bell tire power play here for the Red Wings. Kendall mishandled. Quincy gets it through. Chris Russell on it around the far side. Kendall there able to block and set up here. Franzen takes the shot. He had seven shots against the Rangers. They need more of that from Franzen. That one just glanced off the paddle of McDonald. Kendall able to keep it in, giving it through to Weiss. Kendall down low, Franzen, checked by Russell, 
Got hooked by Russell. And then down the ice it goes. And that was a nice play by the Flames. Russell and company applying huge pressure on the large friends and to jar that puck loose and send it down the ice. Two nice keep ins brought previous by Kendall to create some opportunity for the Red Wings and it didn't work out. Ron Wall in for Datsuk. Over here to Zetterberg. Went back for Datsuk. Off his stick and down the ice it goes. Oh, 10 seconds left in the power play. That pretty much wraps us up here. Cronwall had to go off a flame stick. Datsuk was there to recover. Left one for DeKaiser, who lost it. Checked by Stajan. Flames with a chance off the skate back then, and the Red Wings will recover. Zetterberg comes ahead. Datsuk off his skate. That's why Pavel would have a hard time though wearing those vendors. Puck would have bounced, and he loves to play it off his skate onto his stick. Well, the Red Wings caught a break there when Cromwell turned over. Stager was at the end of the shift, exhausted, couldn't generate any offense because of the exhaustion. Couldn't get to his teammate for a scoring opportunity. Smith. Brendan Smith had stepped up. Backlund with a good play for David Jones. For Quincy, former teammate of Jones. Colorado time. Here's Smith for Calgary. A bouncer in that Howard will take no chances with. With under three to go in period number two. It is all tied up at two on Fox Sports Detroit Plus. With 2.56 left in the second period. Detroit and Calgary are deadlocked at twos with the shots 18 to 9 for the Flames who have dominated for the most part here in the second period. Numerous saves by Jimmy Howard and one too many turnovers by the Red Wings enabling the Flames to get back into this one and tie it at two and now carry some momentum here late in the second period. Johan Franzen has left the Red Wing bench, gone to the room. Not sure whether it's uh, just equipment. And we'll keep tabs on that. And again, Franzen missed the win in Vancouver. Russell over here for Dennis Weidman. Keeps on going, then lost it. Kaiser got in front of him. Weidman slid all the way into Jimmy Howard. Alfredson. Cleary had Weiss going. Weiss with a shot. McDonald the save. Big rebound. Cleary going for it. Chipped to the corner by White. T.J. Galliardi for Mike Camilleri. Leaves it for Galliardi. Check taken to the boards by Abdelkader. Puck squirted free. Flames first on it. And uh, too far for Chris Butler. And McDonald played one, but that wasn't a great pass. And Brody was covered by Tatar. He's out with Anderson and Abdelkader, who's got it. Again, McDonald just kicked it back into traffic. Have to keep throwing pucks on McDonald. He's given up a ton of rebounds right now. One of those is going to bounce to one of the Red Wing players soon. It could put him up by a goal here. Sean Monahan has got a goal. In for Sven Berchi. Played with a high stick, though. With some uh, good eye-hand coordination there. I'm going, to say a, I'm going to say a very impressive stick work there by the Calgary Flame forward. An obvious high stick, but... One of those plays that in practice they fool around and do that all the time, but in a game it's obviously not not legal. Sean Monahan, who's obviously staying with the Flames the rest of the year, he could have gone back to junior. And Jay Feaster, their GM, said to Sean Monahan, "What would you do with Sean Monahan?" And Sean said, "I'd keep him. I'd That's admire good... the kid. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, gotta have confidence." It's, these young guys coming in the league now have confidence. They know they they're good. They've been training for this opportunity their whole lives, and you have to have it now in this league. Yeah, this is a men's league. It's the best of the best and if you want to play here You got to think you're one of them and be part of it. And he's been great so far for the Flames Here's Bertuzzi Out to the corner we showed you Anthony Mantha earlier and what if he came up to camp next year instead of going to the American Hockey League You know going on 20 years old and he's shooting the lights out early on One of my enemies stick with the Red Wings at a young age like that. And we'll see Here's Bertuzzi back of the net been around shot saved by McDonald. There's Datsuk. Threw it in front of the goal again. Now Bertuzzi's got it. 
It's almost like this Flames line seems to back off this trio. Datsuk with a shot and just missed. Like they're giving them a lot of room. They don't want to get burned, but they could get burned. They've got a couple against them already tonight with Datsuk and Zetterberg and Bertuzzi. It's like they're almost a step short. Another steal there by Datsuk. Then Bertuzzi on it again. Finally, the Flames just whip it down the ice. It's definitely a double-edged sword. You sit back, they're going to eat you alive, but the minute you go and get aggressive on them, the same could happen. They move the puck so good and, and so well with each other that they can become dangerous in both situations. So this second period comes to a close. And after taking a while to get a shot, Detroit did wind up with seven to Calgary's six. Two-period total, 18-12 in favor of the Flames. Our MGM Grand Detroit second period intermission. Danny Cleary, and uh, he would know best because he didn't want to go to Philadelphia. He wanted to stay a Red Wing badly. And in the end, he is. So we'll have his story as well coming up with Trevor Thompson in our second intermission. The second period, not nearly as good as the first for Detroit. The Red Wings with two in the first. The Flames get two in the second from Butler and Monaghan, and the game's all even after 40. You can vote at the Fox Sports Detroit Red Wings player of the game presented by McDonald's new premium Southwest McRap. To vote, just text Wings followed by a space and the player's uniform number to 37338. Or vote online at foxsportsdetroit.com. See final results post-game during Red Wings Live. Be there when the Wings battle the Dallas Stars on Thursday, November 7th. The first 7,500 fans in attendance receive a Henrik Zetterberg bobblehead. For tickets, call 313-471-7575 during normal business hours or visit DetroitRedWings.com. Red Wings with two in the first, the Flames with two in the second. So now the third to decide things. Datsuk in the middle for Setterberg and Bertuzzi, the Red Wings' best line tonight. DeKaiser and Cronwall on the back end. And no Johan Franzen on the Red Wings' bench to start the third. He had gone, as we told you, midway through the second, waiting to get an update. But if we don't see him now, we likely won't the rest of the night. Well, that would be a really long equipment issue. And again, Johan Franzen with that undisclosed injury. Yeah, hopefully it's just an equipment issue, but that's quite a long time. So now we're hoping hopefully it's nothing serious. And Franzen will be ready maybe at some point in this game and hopefully for tomorrow. Puck is knocked away by Alfredson. And again, the Red Wings place Jonas Gustafson on injured reserve today. Pete Morazic will get the start in Edmonton tomorrow night. Fox Sports Detroit tomorrow night for that game as the Flames were offside. Now straddle the line and get back onside. Tomorrow night, as of this moment, is to be the turn of Darren Helm, but we'll see. So that may partially solve a Franzen issue if that's the case. But again, much to be decided between now and then. Off the skate of Colburn. Played back for Camilleri. As Cronwall able to move one ahead for Thomas Tatar. And it is official that Johan Franzen will not be back tonight as we thought. Center right in front of him. Let's go! From a bad angle, Joachim Anderson. That's what happens when you throw it at the net. And the Red Wings lead it 3-2. to two. Well, this has really been the Achilles heel for the Flames for most of this season. A bad angle shot by Anderson. Just spinning and throwing it on net. Hitting the inside of McDonald's pad and just sliding across the goal line. Hitting the right inside the right skate. Just trickling across to put the wings up 3-2, but... The Flames vote shot Toronto 40 to 22, I believe. Once again, up in shots here, 18-13, and a goal early in the third like that could really put you on your heels. So a huge goal as the Red Wings get one from the uh, fourth line as Joachim Anderson gets the goal. 
And back in front by one, three to two. Detroit's never trailed in this game, led two nothing. And the Flames came back to tie it. So Datsuk, Zetterberg, and Anderson, the goal scorers. Puck's knocked down. Long shot in, and that'll be stopped by Howard. They've given the goal in the building to Tatar. Unless they thought when Anderson, Anderson shot it, it hit Tatar's stick on the way. I thought that for a moment, but didn't think so. We'll have to get another look at it. Eves will go in there. Kendall able to knock it down at center. Berchi played one over. Last shot back for Kindle. Knocked away as Anderson will go in after it. Back in it comes for Albertson. O'Brien scooped it around. Cleary able to pick it off. Two Albertson covered. To the point to Quincy, a shot loose in front of the goal. Monahan played it to the corner. Daniel Alfredson there first. Now the Red Wings having flames on their heels. Quincy backing up, let a shot go that went wide. Smith will pinch in. Puck is up high and over the glass and into the seats. So let's look at that goal they've given to Tatar, but uh, we're not sure about this. Anderson just coming to the corner to grab the puck. No. Doesn't hit Tatar's stick. It no. goes between the skate and the heel of Tatar. I think the follow through of Anderson's blade might have hit Tatar's blade, with, which gave the illusion of the puck hitting his blade. But uh, obvious on the replay, a uh, goal by Anderson. Well, the Red Wings back in front, three to two. After a second period, they'd like to forget. But a better start here in the third. And the Red Wings with three goals now. Nine of the previous 13 games, they've been held to two goals or fewer. Here's Zetterberg to Datsuk. And McDonald will pick it up. So nine of the previous 13 held to two goals or fewer, and the last five with only one victory in that time. So getting three is huge, the way this team has been struggling for offense. Yeah, and it's been a, an odd game. And the Flames have played... We think in their minds a, a very good game up to this point and a goal that could be a backbreaker and a good break for the Red Wings. They need to take advantage of that and play smart, good, hard hockey here for the last 16 minutes, 15 seconds in the third period. Detroit being outshot again tonight. They've outshot the opposition only four times this season. Last season, two-thirds of the games. So it's uh, been more of a struggle, and yet the Red Wings still with a record of 7-4-2 and two, and here with a record of a penalty. Interference the call. So now they'll have to kill off two minutes of a Calgary power play as Kendall's going to the box. Yeah, Kendall's going to get an interference call here in this penalty. The referees call all day long. The dump around the defender and the hand comes off the stick. It's a light grab, but nonetheless, anytime you either bring your stick on an opponent, opponent high or grab him in any way, shape, or form, that's an easy call for the referees. and. The NHL nowadays, and the Flames here with a big opportunity to tie the game. Calgary power play, 20th in the league. Right off the draw, big face-off win for Detroit. Face-offs in this game after 40 minutes were 50-50. Stephen Weiss has had a great night in the face-off circle at nearly 80%. Best of the Red Wings. And draw is so important on your penalty kill. It allows you to get that puck down the ice and doesn't allow the team to get puck possession. It's hard to get that back in this new NHL nowadays. Camilleri will try as he brings it in. And again, the puck went off the stick of Glenn Cross. Anderson with a long shot in on McDonald. Calgary with a 500 record coming into play tonight. You know, Flames fans, fans are loving the Oilers struggling. This season, the Red Wings will meet Edmonton tomorrow night. To stay in the province of Alberta. Glenn Cross, back to Yuri Hudler. 
Other has an assist tonight. Weidman for Camilleri to Weidman. Back for Mike Camilleri. Puck didn't settle for him. They'll try again. Weidman backhand, forehand. One-timer Camilleri in front of the goal and tipped it up high and stays in play. Good work by Lashoff and Eads. Coming in was Quincy to help. That went off the dasher and ricochets to center for Weidman. Nice work by Lashoff to stay persi persistent on that puck. Second and third efforts get settled for the Red Wings. 20 seconds remaining in the Jakob Kindle penalty. Brody's pass deflected away and knocked down the ice by Cronwall. Irving's penalty kills have been very efficient tonight. They've gotten pucks out when they've had to. They've kept the box tight. Here's Hover in the clear. Getting back was Pavel Datsuk. On a long stretch pass as Kindle's out of the box. And with that, it will be icing as the Red Wings shot it up to the expiration of the penalty. So Calgary 0 for 5 on their power play tonight. A stretch pass all the way to Hudler with a chasing Datsuk. And I wonder if Hudler looks back and notices who's behind him in hot pursuit and thinks to himself, is there even a chance for me to get a shot off? Great play by Datsuk. Butler at the line. Howard saw it all the way. Sven Berchi partially knocked it down and he got hit hard by Cronwall. Datsuk trying to get away from Stajan. Datsuk shoots it in. Looked back and wondered where the hooking call was. Knocked down by Alfredson. His play for Zetterberg knocked away. Datsuk carrying on with it. They say he touched it with his stick that was in the air. And Datsuk having some words with the referee. Why don't you call some of the hooks, he's saying. We're back in a moment. Well, welcome back. Tonight's high-speed shot is brought to you by Charter Internet and Hedrick Zetterberg with the second goal tonight. Off a draw, the wings battling for the puck. Pavel Datsuk doing what he does, getting to Pertuzzi. Pertuzzi with a nifty backhand pass to Hedrick Zetterberg who makes zero mistake in bearing that up high on Joey McDonald. And what shouldn't go unnoticed tonight, Calgary with 20 shots on goal. They've had five power plays, but only four shots in those five power plays, and their last two with none. So the Red Wing penalty killing has been very good, and here's an opportunity offensively for Weiss. He took Russell to the boards. Clary's got it. In there by Camilleri. Weiss taken there by Russell, who kicked it free, did Weiss for Alfredson. Spinning from Smith. Finds Quincy at the left point. Safely back in behind for Cleary. Much more methodical here. Quincy the shot, just wide. Brendan Smith made the play. They keep it deep. Alfredson. For Weiss off his skate. Couldn't pick it up cleanly. TJ Galliardi. Into the Red Wing end. Finds Camilleri in the shot blocked by Weiss. Loose in front. Weiss with it again. And Stephen Weiss careful not to ice it. However, it's going to be a penalty here to Calgary. Maybe some of Pavel Datsuk's words about why not call the hooking finally does get called. We saw Pavel as we went to break say some words to the referees. A bear and Lego. He thought he'd been hooked a few times. And now they do get a call, although Pavel not a part of it. But here as we go to break, saying to the referees, come on now. Just reminding them a bit. And a, a guy like Pavel Datsuk is respected greatly, not only by the players in the league, but the referees obviously too. And they hear, hear, hear off a scramble. Off the draw, Datsuk got that face off, but taken by Backlund and clear. So Cronwall and Kendall, Zetterberg, Datsuk, and Bertuzzi, who has it now, finds Datsuk late. Datsuk on the move, spins back with it. A twirling play to Kindle, who lost it. Wanted to go back to Pavel, didn't work. The puck has sure been bouncing off a lot of sticks tonight, and some weird bounces and skipping a lot. And the players did say the ice is a lot better, but from up here, there's been a lot of bouncing pucks and pucks that have ricocheted off sticks. Datsuk for Bertuzzi off the boards to Alfredson. 
Cronwall quickly moved to Zetterberg. Alfredson fired one off a skate. Nice block there. And you wear those uh, skate blockers, you can get that done. Here's Datsuk back here to Alfredson. For Datsuk, top of the circle. Nifty pass back to Alfredson to Cronwall. The shot tipped by Zetterberg. Bertuzzi banging away at it. And Joey McDonald held that pad down and made the save. It's like when they tell you it's mandatory to wear the skate guards, they're also telling you it's mandatory to block <laughs> yeah, shots, that's aren't That's true, they? too. And it doesn't that, matter if right. you're a goal scorer or a fourth-line player. Get in the shot lane and block those shots. And here a nifty shot pass tipped by Zetterberg. And Joey McDonald holding his ground. But this isn't a shot on net by Cromo. He looks for Zetterberg on the side of the net, tipping Bertuzzi, banging away. Trying to jam that pass. McDonald's who holds strong on the short side post. 58 seconds left in the Camilleri penalty. And off that face-off, TJ Brody gets it the length of the ice. Red Wings, 45 seconds remaining in the belt. Higher power play. Kindle left it for Thomas Tatar for Daniel Cleary. Puck came free. Butler with a good defensive play for Calgary. For Glenn Cross. He'll kill some clock. Russell to Glenn Cross again. Hit to Tar on the outlet. Try. Here's Weiss. Cleary in his toe stuffer there by McDonald. Well, maybe that one's making up for the third goal that Joey McDonald let in. Indefinite off a horrible turnover and a great chance with a kicking save by McDonald to keep it at 3-2. So the penalty over Camilleri out of the box. The Red Wings 0 for 3 on the power play. They've had five shots on three power plays, three on the last one. Calgary with four shots on their 0 for 5 tonight. Applicator in front of the goal for Anderson. Pucks up high. Finally bounces down. Played ahead to an on-rushing Sven Berchi, who gets taken out by Cronwall. The Kaiser tried to flip it up the near boards. Didn't work. Cronwall gives him the puck back. Drew Miller at center. Applicator gets it in. Anderson will go in after it with Smith. Wow, well, DeKaiser and Cromwell sure are play playing great, great hockey right now in the absence of Erickson. Picking up those extra minutes and playing solidly and leading this young defense. Cromwell played 28-58 in the game in Vancouver. Colburn. Watched by Bertuzzi. Butler for Camilleri. To Joe Coburn. Brendan Smith. Last shot will go after it now. Coming in is Galliardi. Bertuzzi comes back for it. 6-5 Coburn going after Brendan Smith. Who got it past the stick of Brody, and they say this will be ice. Well, the faceoff will come back down into the Red Wing end. Well, Brendan Smith, who's been playing better, and for a, a young player like him, sometimes the less is more. And realizing he had nowhere to go with the puck, just decided to eat it in the corner and wait for help from winger Hedrick Zetterberg, and a good decision enables the Red Wings to get out of their zone. the face-off control by the Flames and a shot into the glove of Howard who will hold on for a face-off with 8.45 to go in the third and the Red Wings lead Calgary by a goal. And Pavel Datsuk who's been great again tonight defensively here chasing Yuri Hedler down from behind and nullifying the scoring chance time and time again. Leads the leagues in, take in takeaways Winner of the Lady Banging, there's a reason for it. Great, great pass to Bertuzzi, which is missed there, Ken. A nifty little backhand pass to Bertuzzi to get that puck and enable him the opportunity to get to Zetterberg for the goal. Datsuk and Zetterberg each with goals tonight, and along with Bertuzzi and Alfredson, they've scored 19 of the Red Wings' 31 goals this season. So obviously, yeah, they need those two going. They have tonight, and there you have a 3-2 lead. Well, the Anderson goal right now is the uh, difference. And the goal that uh, Joey McDonald 
wouldn't like, and that's for sure. Howard will hold on. Remember, Joey McDonald won seven straight of the Red Wings back in February 2011. Some injuries, and he came up huge. Get the $59 fan pack to watch the Wings take on the Stars November 7th or see them battle the Jets November 12th. You get two tickets, two hot dogs, and two soft drinks for just $59. Go to DetroitRedWings.com now for tickets. And a lot of those wins by Joey McDonald came in that home winning streak, did they not? And a lot of overtime, yeah. a lot of tight games and pressure-packed games that Joey McDonald stood tall for the Red Wings. And then he got injured in March, I think, after that. Seven seasons and two start, two stints with the Red Wings organization for Joey McDonald. Had a back injury, and as a goalie, if your back is ever sore, that is not a good thing. Here's Tatar. Caught off by McDonald. Kindle will go back. Under eight to play here in the third period. Shots 21-19 Calgary. Flames in their new third sweaters. Applicator will go in. The Red Wings in their time have had just four third jerseys. One year when they wore the uh, striped uniform when the original six teams were playing. Only when they played one another. And in the Winter Classic, a different one. Other than that, nothing like the original. Here comes Bertuzzi. Left it for Zetterberg, but that was read by Brody. Datsuk. Brody trying to keep him to the outside. Datsuk. Moving in with Smith. Stick was lifted. Quincy getting position on Galliardi and a good play to cover up for Smith, who pinched in. Nearly an odd man rush for Calgary. Over Bertuzzi, stick. And that will be icing as a result. As soon as the game ends, join us for Red Wings Live. We'll reaction. We'll hear from the head coach, Trevor Thompson, will join us. Red Wings Live after the game. Young Brody doing a good job on Pavel Datsuk, who was spinning and spiraling around in the flame zone. And he did a great job. He didn't panic. He stuck with it. And got it out and almost enabled the Flames to set an opportunity on the Red Wings goal to try and tie this up. But every time Pavel gets that puck, is what is he going to do next? That's what I think up here. What is going to happen now? Yeah. Wyvin back for Russell. Away from Cleary. With a feed for Matt Stajan. Back into the middle and a shot by Ben Cross. Hit by Howard. Cleared by Cronwall. Cleary for Steven Weiss across center and in. Alfredson barreling down there on Weidman, turned over. Cleary the shot. Oh, Joey McDonald, good save. Alfredson forced the issue and Weiss set it up in front. And McDonald with a good stop on Cleary. Well, uh, so that's two saves he's made since allowing a goal that he would like to have back a hundred times over. And hopefully we don't have to remember these saves at the end of the night, but. The pass into the slot to a cruising Cleary who hammers it to the glove side of McDonald who makes a great glove save. Back to the line for Cronwall into the corner. Applicator back of the net taken there by Smith. For Joachim Anderson. Sean Monahan on him. He left it for Tatar. Back to Anderson. Ooh, and that just missed. That was on net, it was in. Anderson tipped it to the middle to Tatar, and a shot deflected and wide. Applicator. Red Wings winning the uh, race to the puck here. That was a hot one to handle for Cronwall. The Kaiser forced back. Left there for Anderson, up with Tatar and Applicator. Applicator's got it, shoots it, a rising shot goes high as McDonald came out on it. He might have got a piece of that. He may have. Red Wings much better in, in end zone time this period, getting pucks deep, cycling and getting pucks to the net. Their patience is paying off here late in the third period. Zetterberg moving in. Galliardi for Calgary. 
Lashoff able to knock it back in, goes Zetterberg. Got Bertuzzi with him, who's got it. Delayed in the corner. Good outlet there by Calgary for Butler. That's a really hustling on the back check. Datsuk took the body on Camilleri, allowing Smith to get the puck. It's been a vintage Datsuk night yeah. tonight. Great. Smart, smart, smart. Great defensively. It must be frustrating to play against him every single shift for the Flames players staging. Yeah, you like to view it if you're on the other side. It's a great challenge, but you know in your heart of hearts, one mistake, it's not fun. That's in for staging. Threw it in front, nobody there. Jones, back for staging. Knocked away and passed Russell. And down, no icing here as Russell goes back to get an under four to play in the third period. Red Wings in the middle game of their longest road trip of the season. Just seven days, four games. Edmonton tomorrow night, Winnipeg on Monday. Having a very good third period here, trying to close this out to go to 2 on on this trip, which would be huge going into the final two games. Unlike the second period, shots here in the third, 9-4 Detroit. And face-offs, 11-4 Red Wings. Much better third period after a sloppy second. And the Applicator scores! Whoa! Far down! What a shot! Just an Applicator, and it's 4-2! to two. What a shot by Applicator here. Still a goal that Joey McDonald is a goalie. You can't give away that short side. When you have a player coming along, around from the corner with, and he's a left-handed shot, you have to have that side covered. Was his screen, he's just beaten cleanly up high on the short side. And in the end, that cannot go in. And for the Flames, once again, and what has been biting them early in the year is bad goals at bad times. And after playing a pretty good game up to this point, find themselves down by two with 324 left. So the Red Wings have themselves four goals in the night, and that's been a while in coming. And lead by two goals. It's a great shot, but at the same time, a goalie in this league in the NHL has to have on the short the side. Goal. And one that Joe would probably be the first to say that he should have had both of the last goals in the third period. First time since October 17th against Colorado and a win on the road there, 4-2. That the Red Wings have scored four goals. The other time they scored four this season was in the 5-2 win over Philadelphia. So for the third time this year, they've got themselves four. And under three to play and looking for a second straight win to begin this four-game trip. The first time in their history that they'll play all four Western Canadian teams in order in Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg. Datsuk goes back to the line. Lash off in behind the net. Kendall with it. For Datsuk, the shot goes wide. Last 18 games in this building, Red Wings with a slight edge, 10 and 8, coming into play tonight. Much better numbers in Edmonton for tomorrow. But the Flames, who beat the Red Wings all three times last year, Detroit saying not now. Well, Ken, this whole period is set up a smart play by the Red Wings early. They got pucks deep, got some end zone time, didn't turn pucks over like they did in the second period, and it creates opportunity in the end. And good goals are bad goals. They're in the net, and from the way, they, the way they've played in the previous 10, 15 minutes of the period has enabled them to have this two-goal lead. That play just offside. Cleary's skate was in the air. Tried desperately to get back onside just as Weiss brought it in. But the sharp linesmen, as they are in this league, Called that one. So we'll get a face-off. Justin Applicator with his second. Cronwall and DeKaiser getting the helpers at 16-36. It's amazing how many times they're right. The linesman. The linesman. Yeah. It's incredible the pace and the speed of the game and how many times the puck changes direction, moves, and the players are moving, and they get it right almost every time. Calgary's called their timeout here. Mike Babcock still speaking with his troops using the opportunity. So after this road trip where the Red Wings are in Western Canada and Winnipeg, as we say, on Monday night, 
They'll have only a January California trip remaining for five days, and that'll be it. They've already knocked off the Phoenix, Colorado. Half of that one was good. This one looking to go 2-0 and to start it. That's pretty good. And then only have to go out west one more time to uh, California. Boy, that, that'll and be that, a tough one, the way that one shapes up. And that's going to help things along as the season progresses and keeping the players fresh. Only one more time on the western swing is going to be big. Now this... Right where the face-off is, the Flames have pulled their goaltender. Interesting. And Red Wings will shoot it in off the draw. So Bob Hartley saying, what the heck? He's under two to play. We need two to tie. Let's get him out of the goal. So a net empty for Calgary. As Russell will shoot it deep. Cronwall and DeKaiser, Miller, Datsuk, and Zetterberg for Detroit. Joe Colburn to the line to Russell. Dennis Weidman, who's got a great shot, threw it down to Camilleri from a sharp angle, hoping to go off a skate. It slipped past Russell and down. The Red Wings protecting the front of the net very well in the first period. Got away from that in the second. Now they're back to doing a good job here in the third period. And this will be icing. Well, here's what's coming up for the Red Wings on Fox Sports Detroit starting tomorrow night in Edmonton and the struggling Oilers. Defense a major issue, goaltending an issue, and young forwards up front. Andrew Ladd always a force for Winnipeg. They've been up and down. And then back home. Russell. With a minute to go here in the third period. Joey McDonald will head back to the Calgary bench. They'll get an extra skater out again. Weiss, though, able to intercept the play. Now Calgary comes up with the puck. Yuri Hudler. Hudler with a shot that Howard will hold. Hudler's at a fairly quiet night tonight for the former Red Wing. Last year was a tough year for him with his father passing and never really could get it going and he promised Bob Hartley this year he'll be a leader. He had Sean Monahan living at his house and Monahan's going to find a billet soon but really taking the youngster under his wing. And what a lot of people don't know about Hudler when he played in Detroit is the one thing. He was an ultra competitor. If you told him he couldn't do something or he wasn't good enough he would prove you wrong and want to do that. Draw one here by Calgary. Point shot. Howard the save. Hudler off the back of the net. Good work by DeKaiser on both Glenn Cross, and sure enough, DeKaiser came up with it. Finally, a third flame took it away from him. Monaghan. In front for Glenn Cross, off his leg, pinball to Howard, who made the save. Came loose in front again, Datsu. Able to lift a backhander to center with 20 seconds to go in the third. Hudler shoots it in. DeKaiser let it go to the corner, cluttered past him. Stage into Glenn Cross in front, they score! seconds left. An unfortunate break for the Red Wings here. The Flames pressing desperately, trying to get a goal, throwing everything on the net. The puck behind the net. Just thrown out front, hoping it off Cronwell's back, the back of Cronwell's skate, sliding ever so slowly. Passing on to where Howard, who has no idea where this puck is. A seeing eye shot to make it 4-3. But with only 10 seconds left, Red Wings still look like they're in good shape if they can. 19.50 will be the time of the goal. Be credited to Curtis Glenn Cross, his fourth of the season. So it's a 4-3 game. And they'll drop it again. So Calgary's only lost once in regulation at home in five games, and that was the last game to Toronto when they lost 4-2. It's 4-3 now. Hudler getting the second assist. He's got two assists. Stajan got the other one at 19.50. Off the draw. Kick back at center. Weiss doing all he can. Monahan carries in, intercepted by Cleary, and that'll do it. As the Detroit Red Wings are going to win a second straight on this four-game Western Canada road trip.
Jimmy Howard victorious. He'll have the night off tomorrow night in Edmonton with Peter Morazic in goal. But a great start to this trip for Detroit. A very, very good start. You could say six periods into the trip. They've only had one off period, that being the second period here tonight, if you want to nitpick. But we're going to look and say they played five great periods out of six. They're playing great hockey. 20 shots given up in Vancouver, 25 tonight. Playing very good, much better defensively than they were previously at home. They need to continue that for the rest of the trip. Outshot Calgary 10-7 in the third period. Although being outshot 25-22 for the game, the Red Wings win it 4 to three and Justin Applicator's goal winds up being the winner. How about that? I'm sure we'll hear from him and others in Red Wings Live still to come. We'll return to Calgary on Fox Sports Detroit Plus right after we take this timeout. <laughs> 